Hi, this is again Tom Lusher, and today uh, we're going to have a little bit longer uh, feature in Inside Cardiology because it's on anticoagulation, personalized or tailored anticoagulation is a bit more complex. And I will refer to my paper that you see here that has been published uh, in the European Heart Journal just lately. It's an extensive review with many uh, experts in the field. And here you can see again the uh, coagulation cascade. You all know that, but it's, I think, very nicely designed by our designer. And uh, it reflects that uh, both coagulation factors and the platelets work together to form a, a solid clot. Now, uh, in this review, we actually went through the circulation. We start down with the veins that you can see here, then we move up to the, to the lung for pulmonary embolism. Then we move to the uh, patent foramen ovale as a source of embolic stroke, particularly uh, in younger individuals. Then we move into the uh, left atrium in the appendix where clots can occur uh, in atrial fibrillation. We raise the question whether in the ventricle there may be clots that may be embolizing. And this is particularly the case in the very severe uh, STEMIs that are not treated properly or in time with primary PCI. Then we move to the aortic valve, the artificial valves, the TAVIs, uh, to the carotids and down in the aorta to aneurysms and there the question whether they are embolizing, should we uh, treat them also with anticoagulants and eventually into lead uh, the uh, former called PAD, uh, stenosis and atherosclerosis of the limbs, limb arterial uh, disease. And so uh, let's move on and we can see here venous thrombi, mainly in the lower legs, uh, in the cable veins, then it can passage through the PFO into the left atrium, into the brain or any other uh, peripheral organ. We can have pulmonary embolism and on the arterial side we have the, again the PFO pa passage into the left atrium, the appendix as a source of emboli and atrial fibrillation, left ventricular thrombi and STEMI and non-compaction, uh, a relatively rare uh, form of cardiomyopathy, then the aortic valve as such or when it has been replaced by a mechanical valve or a TAVI, uh, the aorta, uh, the carotids, then of course uh, also lead uh, the uh, uh, limb uh, vascular disease. So venous thromboembolism occurs mainly after surgery but if also if you're uh, in a hospital uh, for prolonged periods of time and you can have uh, a pulmonary embolism as shown here on the CT scan. Now uh, Stavros Konstantinidis uh, did uh, write this part of it and you can see uh, that if you have an acute pulmonary embolism it is important to decide whether it is hemodynamically stable. Then of course uh, the patient has to rest in the hospital, maybe he needs thromb thrombolysis, maybe even assist uh, support uh, if he does not have any signs of uh, left and, uh, uh, right ventricular overload, uh, then he can actually be treated even on an ambulatory uh, basis. So there's quite a spectrum depending on the risk uh, status of the patient. Then of course as we move uh, to a PFO that you see here closed with an Amplatz device, we have now three trials that are listed here that all show remarkable reductions in uh, uh, peripheral emboli and particularly in stroke. So uh, PFOs should be closed unless there is any contraindication for a percutaneous closure, then anticoagulation may be an alternative. Moving on to atrial fibrillation, how do we prevent uh, thrombi in the left atrial appendix? Of course, here NOACs are the uh, treatment of choice. And here you can see uh, both the reduction uh, in strokes uh, on the left and bleeding on the right. And overall we see that compared to anticoagulation, NOACs are always favorable uh, compared uh, to classic warfarin or Marcumar or Syndrome uh, and therefore are the uh, uh, medication of choice in this very indication. And then of course there are peop uh, people that are uh, not suitable for anticoagulation because they had bleedings in the brain in particular. 
uh, for instance, even do, uh, under uh, anticoagulation or uh, spontaneously. And there, uh, of course, if they have atrial fibrillation, an occlusion of uh, the left atrial appendix may be an alternative. And you can see here, uh, there are a number of trials. In general, they are, uh, tend to be a bit better than anticoagulation, but overall, I would say it's equivalent uh, and it is an alternative in these patients that do not uh, support any anticoagulation, be it the NOAC or warfarin uh, or any other vitamin K antagonist. <clears throat> then moving on to the aorta, the aortic valve as such, aortic stenosis, we don't recommend anticoagulation. Uh, after a mechanical valve replacement surgically, we do need for sure uh, anticoagulation with vitamin K antagonist because NOAX uh, proved not effective. In TAVI, we had a big surprise in the Galileo trial that you see here. We were afraid of HALT, uh, this uh, uh, thrombus formation in the TAVI valve that you see here on top. But unfortunately, the Galileo trial showed an increase in mortality, increased bleeding uh, with NOAX, in this case, rivaroxaban. So we stick with aspirin and clopidogrel in this very instance. Then, of course, uh, above the aortic valve comes the coronary arteries. And here, of course, clot formation for acute coronary syndromes is the central mechanism of uh, acute coronary occlusion that you see here on the left. And of course, it's an interaction between platelets and coagulation that eventually leads uh, to a STEMI as shown here. Now, uh, can we prevent this by aspirin? If we uh, take it every day before we have a, an acute myocardial infarction, and the disappointment was very, very uh, intense. That three trials, they all showed that overall aspirin does not prevent events. There's a little bit of a uh, an effect, but it's counterbalanced by bleeding in all these trials. So we do no longer recommend aspirin in this context. Uh, then of course comes the question, the dual antiplatelet therapy, how long should we do it? You can see on the top uh, right, uh, the yellow and, and red bars show that if you have a low risk, uh, uh, a high risk of bleeding, a low uh, risk of ischemic events, then of course short uh, term uh, uh, dual antiplatelet therapy is preferred. If ischemia is the major issue, then of course prolonged uh, DAPT uh, may be recommendable. Uh, that is uh, what, what Dr. Bali uh, uh, contributed to this article. So when we end up, this is the summary, the take-home figure in this review. You can see that in the, on the venous side, NOAX are the preferred uh, um, treatment option. Uh, in uh, venous thromboembolism in general, uh, in uh, PFO, it's a more mechanical uh, um, device, namely the, uh, the Amplatz occluder, and the uh, atrial fibrillation, again, NOAX, for those who bleed, a device. And in uh, the left ventricle, thanks to primary uh, PCI, thrombi have become very rare and embolize as well. And the auric valve, anticoagulation if it's a mechanical valve, and otherwise aspirin and possibly dual antiplatelet therapy. Uh, and in the carotid uh, uh, circulation and stroke, uh, it is uh, depending on the situation, either aspirin or clopidogrel. And in the periphery, uh, it is different as well. Uh, in general, we do recommend uh, a P2I12 inhibitor. And so we have a whole spectrum of a differential personalized uh, uh, antithrombotic therapy that is outlined in this article that I recommend you uh, to read. I hope I motivated you to do so and thank you very much for your attention.